on Broward Teen News, we're at Stoneman Douglas High School to learn all about our Eagles. Stay tuned to see a fun and family-friendly Parkland hotspot, a few students helping the elderly stay tech-savvy, and a day of excitement and education where teens had a preview of careers in construction. salaries and an increasing teacher shortage, educators are being forced to take action. Here's Alana with more on the teacher protest. This is Ms. Walkowski, one of over 13,000 teachers in Broward County that is facing the dilemma of doing what they love or what they can afford. I have two children. I have a five-month-old and a six-year-old. Um, it makes it really difficult, you know, to do extra things. I think because my husband and I are both teachers, you know, we worry about how we're going to send our kids to college. And, you know, we like to take our son to Disney and things like extras or things that have to be cut out when we don't have enough money to afford things. Teachers were promised periodic raise based on the staff system. However, between Broward County Schools and the state legislator, promises never came. It happened. What they said is, well, we're going to just change everything up. But I was guaranteed that it, by this point in my career, I would be making so much. So when they changed the rules, there are a lot of teachers like me that got stuck at a level that, well, I should be making this year a little bit over $20,000 more than I make. Teachers can barely make ends meet on their current salary. And making ends meet is impossible. It's, it's impossible. Not in South Florida, not with what I make, even at year 25. And there's new teachers that make fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 less than me. How do you expect to keep people in this profession when they can't make a car payment, they can't make a house payment, they can't make, you know, rent, they can't rent anything. You know, it's, how do you, how do you even have a starter family at the salary that they're paying? And it's, it's not possible. With thousands of teachers facing the harsh reality and fueled by anger more than pay, Ms. Falkowski started a protest to directly get the attention of those in charge of the school board. I organized last year's protest. Last year, out of my you know, frustration for the fact that we hadn't had a raise in, in many, many years um, and our low pay, I organized or I helped to organize the work to the contract. We did a two-week work to the contract and it was sort of a, like a protest against our pay. Um, we did get, most teachers got a four percent to five percent pay raise last year so we did get a pay increase last year but overall the conditions that have led to us having um, such low pay those haven't changed because most of those have come from the legislature and the legislature hasn't changed the things that they've put in place that are keeping our pay so low with not enough teachers and distrust of the state and local government the future of teachers remains unclear and certainly unfunded i had no expectations to be a millionaire I also had no expectations to be go from a middle class salary to an upper lower class salary. Student volunteers are broadening horizons by helping senior citizens stay up to date through education on technology and the internet. Here's Emily with Silver Surfers. Once a week, a group of students attend Silver Surfers, which is a program that teaches the elderly how to use the internet and new technologies. The program actually started before I was yeah, even like, um, like, at Douglas, yeah, and it, it kind of stopped for a while, and then Ms. Hitchcock, really, our right, advisor, well, really wanted to restart the program, so she spoke about it at one of our general meetings and asked who wanted to be committee chair, and I volunteered along with two of my peers. My favorite part of working here at Aston Gardens is just the wholesomeness of working here because I'm not only am I helping a lot, some of the uh, younger younger folks uh, with technology, because even though um, they might be old physically, they're definitely young in spirit, most of them. And vicariously through that, we developed a like we develop a good friendship uh, through working on the internet and solving problems together. Um, I would say my favorite part is just getting to make an impact on someone's life. Um, just coming in and getting to just talk to them, you know, and getting, you know, the smallest little things 
really do make the impact. Like, I don't think sometimes we realize that like printing a picture is such a big deal to someone who doesn't necessarily know how to do it. And just getting to see the result of my times, my time and my efforts. The very favorite part of this program is communicating with these tutors of mine who are very sympathetic to my needs. They make sure that they are able to teach these people in a way that they will understand. So a lot of them do catch on quickly, but just like with all people, everyone here is different. So some of them learn faster and some of them learn slower. I think one of the major differences is that our generation learns by experimentation while the previous generation, such as many of the people that live here at Aston Gardens, they learn through reading books and learning a process. So that kind of makes it a different level of learning, a different type of learning, in that both groups can remember stuff, it's just the way that they learn it is different. But overall, they're pretty fast at memorizing. Oh, indeed, they've been most helpful, and I never forget anything they tell me because they are so good at impressing me with the facts. They are bright, they are witty, and they have good heart feelings. It keeps my mind alert and it keeps my body from falling apart and it makes me happy, happy, happy. Um, honestly, it kind of depends on the person. Um, I found that the more analogies you make and the more you write things down, the easier they get it. Um, but obviously, and there's always going to be those few people who, you know, memory issues or whatever, who every week you got to reteach them part of it. But um, I still think that's, it's still just great to be able to make an impact. One of the major reasons this is so helpful to them is so they can learn how to communicate with this generation. What a lot of the people that I work with are most excited to do on the internet is honestly just to get in touch with their grandchildren and long distance family. Because overall, that's where the internet is. It's a connection between people. And that's what a lot of these people here want, is just to get in contact with their family and live out the, re the rest of their lives as good as they can. My favorite thing on the internet is to play with it and find my way to what I want. Ext I find it very important because that's what the world is all about now. Students have made some real connections with these people they have met through their involvement. Uh, yeah, I like, well, I like to think so, but um, I think um, one of my favorite people that I get to help is Shirley. Shirley's been coming since we restarted the program, and um, she just has the kindest heart, and I mean, she's one of the people I have to reteach all the time, but it's still, it's just, she always tells me stories about her grandkids and her kids, and, um, you know, like, shows me pictures, and it's just, it's, really great. I've made a connection with many people here, but most notably I think I've made a connection with Phyllis um, and uh, the Mata family. The Mata family is two individuals that I help on a weekly basis with uh, everything from deleting stuff on their DVR to taking a virus off a computer. Uh, and with Phyllis, honestly, we try working but we just get caught up in each other's like stories and conversations because we're like, honestly, we're kind of like friends. So uh, we just end up talking a lot and not getting much done, but that's okay because we have a good time. Students have found that this program is one of the most rewarding volunteer experiences. Um, well, in general, I love helping people, and um, this was just kind of another outlet for me to do that. And then once I started the program, and once I started to feel how rewarding it was, I just kept coming back. After I came here for the first time, I was totally hooked, because uh, previously I hadn't volunteered that much, but now that I have, it just becomes better and better every time that I do it. Volunteering at Aston Gardens has been one of the most rewarding experiences I've ever had in that I've developed relationships that I never would have had I not volunteered. And by, by volunteering, I'm helping the community, and it just feels great doing it. I've been very impressed with the ad positive attitude of these young folks and their wonderful ambitions and goals in life. This program has been an amazing experience for both the elderly and the students. This is Emily Sutcher from WMSD-TV signing off. Thousands of young people in India lack the basic supplies to have a successful school day. One student at Stoneman Douglas is making a difference for children in need with her program Jumpstart India. Here's David on Kosha Patel. That is an Indian teacher's request for supplies to help educate her many students. A mission that without one girl would never be possible. She is a very hard worker 
and she is very passionate about whatever she's working on. She's a scholar, she does tremendous service, she has great character, and the fourth is leadership. Meet Kosha Patel, who may seem like your average student in school, but outside of it, it's anything but. That's because she founded a charity for Indian school children known as Jumpstart India. So the ultimate mission of Jumpstart India would be to get the um, school supplies out to these kids who have been displaced by like poverty and some by these uh, government regulations. And we also want to increase the attendance of, the, of these students to these schools. Education is the most important thing that any society can provide its citizens. As Jefferson said, we cannot have democracy without an educated republic. Having education assures equality for all students and for all young people in order for them to be successful members of society. Kosha took action after seeing thousands of relocated school children forced out of their homes by government projects with little to no school supplies. Actually, it was my sister who initially started the project, and when we went, when she went to India, she talked to a lot of um, of her of our family members and our friends there, and they told her how these schools don't have that much um, resources or any money, so they've been actually paying from their own pocket. So that's where we inspired us to, since we can fundraise here and send the money over there, so that they can buy these like backpacks and supplies like that. According to Kosha, even though Jumpstart India has done so much in the years since its founding, there is still much more to be done. So we have um, supplies given out to 10 schools and the goal is to get them out to 30 schools. So it's, we're in the process and we had um, a grant. So that's, that's where we really got most of the money and then fundraising from like family, friends and stuff. So now the goal is to get it out to like more people and have them like um, fundraise as well as I'm applying to like a lot of other grants to get more money. Even though Kosha feels good about giving the kids school supplies, she cares much more about the impact it has on the children. I would say like when you don't have that much, you become more grateful about whatever you're getting. So these kids were very like grateful with whatever they're getting. They were very happy and they don't ask, of course, like where is this coming from? But there's still a lot more to give to them. So I think if we gave more, they'd be even more happy. And it's just, they want to come to school. Like once they see they have all these supplies and stuff, they want to come and they want to further their education. So it really impacts them in their future. Through caring and compassionate people like Kosha and others here at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, Eagle Pride truly stretches worldwide. David Hogg, signing off. Christmas cheer is here, but has it come too soon? Andy has more with Christmas decor. There are many mysteries in the world, like uh, UFO sightings, Bigfoot sightings, as well as the Bermuda Triangle mystery. But the most ridiculous one of all is why stores think it's a great idea to set up Christmas decorations early. When it comes to decorating for Christmas, people set up and light up their houses around a certain time. Uh, I start setting up decorations uh, beginning of December. I'll help my mom inside the house and then we'll like make some like Christmas cookies. And that's always fun. However, stores set up their decorations to be sold long before the 25th. I usually see stores like Walmart or Target set up right after Halloween at the beginning of November. The reasons behind this are truly puzzling, and many can agree that they shouldn't be sold so early. I think stores should start setting up Christmas decorations at earliest uh, mid-November to late November. I think that stores should usually set up their Christmas decorations at the beginning of December. Those who disagree have decorated their houses at least two months before December. Okay, what I think of people who set up things very early, no, just no, <laughs> that shouldn't happen. They're crazy. You should decorate in December and put out your decorations in December since there's a whole holiday between Halloween and December that we have to acknowledge and decorate for. Among the typical decorations, there are some bizarre ones that litter the market. This mystery won't be solved until the end of time. This has been Andy Pedroza reporting to you from Broward Teen News. Back to you. With a rising mental illness epidemic, films like Listen are more important now than ever. Here's our coverage on the student showing.
change someone. It did what most films about this topic don't do. It took every single problem, of, several problems involving mental illness, several different ways and cultures who can experience it, and put it into one little microcosm in a school. The movie impacted me on how I see how like it's, it's real out there, and how kids actually face such challenges like that, and that it, these kids actually need help. Because it was more of a social piece. It, it, it took a magnifying glass and it pointed it at us and showed us what we should look at in our own society, in our own culture. This isn't just a fictional or like a Hollywood ex exaggerated film. It's there's real examples of real things that happen. And it was a really cool experience to see some of these peers who you would never hear these stories from otherwise say their story and you can appreciate that. Yeah, I was very surprised. I thought the movie had a wonderful plot and it was just, it was amazing. This film should be shown to a lot of kids. I think that the film is an important film to show to adults uh, because I think that oftentimes we forget what it's like to grow up, to be children, uh, to want to, to prioritize social relationships, to prioritize meeting the expectations that our parents and our society set up for ourselves. And we don't realize how hard it is to manage all of those different priorities, especially in a world uh, that is diverse uh, with lots of modes of communication and connection. Because right now in this room, Someone is feeling frustrated. Someone is feeling angry. Someone is feeling alone. I'm curious, random question. How many of you, after watching this film, think that it might make someone feel less alone? Now let me ask you another question. How many of you can personally connect to a character in this film? How many of you are glad you got to watch the film? Please raise your hand. How many of you, by a show of hands, feel that more people should see this film? Kicking it over to Josh, here's soccer. Douglas Boys Soccer, one of the popular sports here at Stoneman Douglas High. The season is nearing its launch and the boys look to move a step forward from their finish in regionals last year. For this year, our goal is always to compete for a district title, get into regionals, and then hopefully take a crack at states. So far, a lot of talent has been shown from uh, especially the new players. Um, we already know what to expect from the old players. There's been some improvement, but it's mainly the new players we want to look at. And it's promising so far. The team has many skilled players and an experienced coach. Both have branched out players playing in clubs and the coach collecting experience from all types of teams. Yeah, I'm actually the director at Coral Springs United, so I get all kinds of ages from U6 to U19s that I've been coaching. I've coached college. Um, I've coached high school with Douglas on the girls' side, so it's not my first and it won't be my last either. I used to play uh, for club, for a very skilled league to play for Coral Springs United, Boca United, and Pompano. But now I just play high school. I think the chemistry of the team's always been good. We return a lot of players. A lot of players play together in clubs. So to have that carry over into high school is always good. This experienced group of players has a powerful leader in Daniel Medeiros. He pushes his teammates for their best and sets an example on the field. It's leading the team. It's not just telling people what to do, but it's showing them. It's taking the charge and showing them how to do it, not just what to do. I'm going to motivate my team, not just from the sidelines, but I'm going to be up on the front lines with them and pushing them to strive for better. Skill and motivation sometimes isn't enough. There's always the issue of filling the shoes of the seniors that left. Tryouts were held and notable newcomers did make the team. Um, 
we didn't lose many seniors, but we lost big uh, players, especially in defense. Um, that's what we say every year. We're always like, oh, we lost this senior, we lost that senior. But in the end, we always pull through. People, there are some good new people there. There are some starters that are newcomers. And they look promising from what I've seen so far. All in all, the Douglas soccer team is a skilled, motivated, and younger team with a goal of avenging a regional finals loss last year. They're hungry. I mean, for a team that won districts and was pretty much eight minutes away from going to states for the first time, you know, they come out, they can be complacent, but they're not. They've worked hard from day one, and I think tomorrow, our first preseason game, will kind of be them being able to express themselves going forward. We're very competitive, and we picked up some very good players, and it's going to be a good year. Building students' futures is key for schools like Stoneman Douglas. Now, we have Construction Career Day. Here in Davie, Florida, a special event is about to go down, Construction Career Days. It was a year. Students will get to learn about the physics of construction, the industry, and business itself. Um, to me, it's very encouraging. It's a great opportunity for my company, Bergeron Land Development, to be with um, the young generation of the future engineers that may work for us and for other companies. To inspire excitement in kids about engineering and construction physics, this annual event displays an array of construction equipment, machinery, and an all-around spirit of fun. I've been here about 16 years. I don't think I was here the first year. I worked for DOT uh, for 38 years, surveying out on the roadway. I've been coming to Career Day for about 10 years, uh, bringing kids when I was a teacher and now organizing so other students can come to experience all the things that, uh, all the opportunities in construction careers do Broward County. Career Day is a great opportunity for students to see opportunities in the construction field and try to plan what their careers might be. To find out what Construction Career Day really means to the people involved, we interviewed an attendee about his thoughts on the day. Career Day uh, means a lot to me. It means that we can kind of reach out to the community and young people all over our, our community and give them a little taste for what we do. You know what, I think there's so many things that they're learning, right? Um, I think they're learning how to present themselves, obviously, at the very beginning of it. You get to learn about um, how do you, to interview for something, on top of the fact that there are so many different opportunities out here. At the end of the day, the students went home knowing that they were much more aware of the inner workings of construction and physics. This is Drew and Josh from WMSD News signing off. Every year, the Spanish club hosts an event of diversity. The multicultural show is an elaborate performance done to appreciate the different cultural backgrounds of our very own students. The different cultures that are featured are dances from Brazil, Cuba, Haiti. There's a little bit of everything. Some countries represented are Venezuela, Colombia, Argentina. The show teaches students how different countries celebrate their heritage. It includes an array of talents based on cultures from around the world. We have cumbia, which is from Colombia. We have tambores, which is from Venezuela. We have a belly dance we, from Asia. We have Bollywood dancing, and we have K-pop. Two months of rigorous practice has led to an astounding performance that many enjoyed. We have been practicing almost every day after school for the past two months. This performance ensures that our school's cultural appreciation stays alive. Multicultural is important because it helps you understand the traditions, like I said, like, uh, from um, other countries, um, nationality. Basically, it helps you like yeah, understand them more, like the immigrants, because we have a lot of uh, kids that are from other countries. Well, that's all for Stoneman Douglas High School. If you'd like to see more, follow us at WMSD TV on Twitter. See you next time.